Mr. Bond, I've been expecting you. <laughs> you really did need a white cat there to pull that one off. Hello, welcome to the team previews. We're doing Soul Dynasty today. Got ourselves Jack on the pod as well. Uh, Jack, you've been doing your own team previews as well. You've been breaking away from the mold. We have a mafia-esque yeah. style control over content in the Overwatch scene, and you've broken away. Yeah. Well, I thought it's time to finally take the chains off of every other content creator, <laughs> potential talent, and make Matt pay for his sins of uh, <laughs> locking down the rest of the Overwatch League. I mean, he's got too much power, and I don't like that. So I'm standing up, causing some sort of rebellion with just myself. Look at my thumbnail game, by the way. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's, it's not that's bad. good. That's it's actually not bad. Shot you got the good face? YouTuber face. Yeah, it's good YouTuber yes, face. I do. Okay, yeah, Jack, I do, yes. so I want to you know, give you... a pretty good channel. Pretty good what? channel, but, you know, there's a lot of bad actors out there. So, you know, if you if mm. you want to pay us some of your ad revenue, we can pretend... Oh, yeah. Take care of you, brother. Uh, Your family. I'm sure you would. I'm uh, sure you would. That's uh, incredible. Uh, what was your... What was your big takeaway when you did that Soul Dynasty team preview then? You've already done a video on your channel. Can you tell me a hot take you had or some kind of big overarching point? Uh, team okay, actually. Maybe not. Team I will okay. see. Yeah. No, look, they picked up the best fucking free agent main tank there was in Smurf. Their backline looking a little bit weaker. Jonak, is he over? Oh, he's not even he's not on the team he anymore. He's, he's gone. Exactly. Anymore. That's the thing. Was he overrated? Don't fucking know. And we'll never actually find out. That was <laughs> my, my was my main fucking problem. Is that we're not gonna unfortunately obviously Jonak for his own personal reasons isn't playing anymore. But like I wanted to see if Jonak still had it, which is uh, right. the biggest disappointment for me. But they had the best main tank pickup of the season. Yeah, let's let's start just not taking a, a look at the roster. I mean, I think the tank line's a good place to start because it's not exactly a tank line, it's just Smurf, but yeah. Smurf is I think, you know, Connor, you've talked a lot about Super being the best tank to put your stock into heading into Overwatch 2. I'm big on Smurf as well. I think that this guy's extremely well-rounded, you know, been at the top of the game for a long, long time. And he's uh, somebody that I have confidence in being able to flex around a little bit within the tank department too. Are you? What, sorry? Are you? Am I confident in him? Yeah, well, like to be a sole flex. tank. And him being able to flex. That's the part that Johnny's asking. I'm confident in the sense that in terms of all other main tank players, Smurf would be very, very high up my list in terms of those I would be comfortable as the solo main tank. Do I think solo main tanking is a good idea anyway in Overwatch 2? No. But if you could only pick one, I'd be good for, with Smurf and I'd be good with Super and who else would i even have in that conversation maybe like a i don't even know who it would be you know who you know who i would have if he was still playing gesture <laughs> sure <laughs> really? gesture. i would still have gesture i i don't know i actually i do think smurf if the if main tanks continue to be as strong as they are in overwatch one which there's no guarantee of in fact all the current like rumors don't necessarily support that hypothesis uh then Smurf, I think, is a great pickup. I'm just more worried about his flexibility on off tanks. I think on main tanks, though, then, like, yeah, sure. He's a, he's a really good pickup, and there's no denying that he's one of the best at it. It's more so, like, can he flex onto off tank? Because what we've seen from him in the Overwatch League flexing to off tank, I definitely would have preferred Super on it the majority of the time. What, you mean when he picked up the Roadhog occasionally? Roadhog, and I think he, didn't he do, like, did, am I completely misremembering where he did, like, Zarya for, like, a split second? Maybe I'm misremembering. He might have done, but... I can't really recall that. But I can't maybe... remember. I'm working but either on it. Way, I'm crunching the numbers. Yeah, crunch, crunch the numbers, Johnny. But either way, the point being is like, I'm still not sure I would really want him on an off tank comparatively to like a super or even like a Marvel with at least a Sigma play, you know? So. Yeah, I think um, uh, the, the reason I'm fairly confident in Smurf, I think, is that he's demonstrated an ability to play incredibly smartly. I think the, uh, the, the Rhine gameplay gets under... Uh, underplayed quite a bit because of his uh because of the person that he was splitting game time with but he he can play everything at a top level i mean you could argue maybe about the wrecking ball because that seemed to be a, a small point of contention within the san francisco tank line but he's just been able to turn up and play everything if you give him the time to do it and i don't understand why that would be different unless you're going into a radically different direction with tanks with stuff like doomfist 
<laughs> but we will talk about that on a different episode. But yeah, the I, I feel pretty confident about Smurf. I think he's one of the best of all time in the main tank role. And yeah, would I prefer to see him bolstered with another off tank? Yeah, I think so. But do you not do you not consider this to be kind of the situation where Seoul have their pick of the litter in terms of any good Korean contenders player that just appears to look good on main tank this season. I feel like that's what they've set themselves up for here is like Smurf mega solid. Then if there's somebody in Korean contenders or the Korean ladder who pops the fuck off, boom, we'll pick them up. They're going to want to play with us. They don't have to move. They're just, they're already in Seoul by all likelihood. We'll just yeah. play them. Yeah, but I mean, those guys are getting picked up already. Like, you know, a lot of people are picking up Korean contender talent. This, yeah, this, I mean, Vin is from, like, O2 Blast anyways, isn't he? And that team just formed out its entire squad to Overwatch League this year. And it's coaching. Well, apart, from, and it's yeah. coaches. apart from the tank yeah. line, actually. I mean, there's still, there, yeah. there are still some all right. But, but that's not really my point, is pre-existing good tank players. I'm talking about people who, you know, someone's just insanely good at the... The, the redesigned Orissa or Doomfist or they're really good at like the long range shots of Winston or whatever the fuck you know like <laughs> something something weird is going to happen like with Winston. the tanks in Overwatch 2 if you wait to see who's good you actually might find a diamond in the rough that you never expected to be a great player but actually is I, I feel like Saul could go with that route and it wouldn't hurt them too badly I I so Here's my seven head prediction for the way tanks are going to go. Just going on the fact that we're having 5v5 and DPS are quicker and not knowing like if supports are going to be changed. They have the passive where you regen health, right? It's like mercy passive um, on all supports. Main tanks and especially, and with Doomfist is a tank now too, main tanks and especially ones that have don't have a ton of mobility, right? I think are going to be pretty fucking useless personally and i know this goes against my point of like smurf being an insane pickup because he's a but i do agree with you josh in the way he can't definitely be well-rounded and improve in that sense i do think any just any tank with mobility is going to be infinitely better in in overwatch 2 than they are in overwatch 1 and like look at doomfist there's no way they're going to remove his mobility as a tank right and snacking on supports is going to be an extremely important thing and that's the way i've thought about overwatch 2 and like teams assembling tank lines if they have a phenomenal off tank i think they're going to do extremely well in overwatch 2 just because mobility is going to be so fucking big uh in the game or at least i think so at least just going on the fact that dps have increased speed doomfist is now a tank like mm. i worry for smurf a little bit because of the fact that he hasn't played a shit ton of uh off tanks but Dude, his ability to pick what up what do we know about this doom fist? Does he have a good doom fist job? Yeah, what do we you know about the smurf doom? Oh, this, yeah, this good is point. Why, this is why these team previews can so quickly descend into madness. Yeah, because, it's true, yeah. <laughs> because We're it's just on the edge. We have to hold ourselves back. I Dude, know. What if uh, their DPS could play doom fist? You just see fucking mi the mirrors of the world just randomly picking up tank again and just playing fucking doom to a high Jackie level. going too far into the chaos. You're, you're yeah, staring know, the sorry. abyss into the eye. Uh, you're staring into the eye of the abyss don't do it uh what no. about the um what about the rest of the team then it, uh so you've got let, let's do the support line next because losing jonak here i think is actually a pretty big blow to how well-rounded their support line looked because if you had these three players vindame who comes from o2 creative who has been playing really well recently especially in big games and then jonak i feel like not only do the hero pools um complement each other relatively well on somebody like creative and jonak but then vindame just rounds that out quite nicely with jonak gone does vindame creative make you very confident in this support line still i, I feel about the same as i did before i'm not yeah. gonna lie doesn't really move the needle too much yeah, I, I feel like it's a, it's a season for them to prove themselves. I think last year, I mean, Sol Seoul were actually really good in the regular season. You know, they didn't make the stages, they didn't make Hawaii, uh, didn't have a deep playoff run, but they were really solid in the regular season, much to credit of uh, uh, Profit and Fitz, who we'll get to. But I feel like for them to step it up to the next level, like some of these support players will just have to be better than they uh, than they were, like Creative, for example, and, and Vindime. So there's a ton of opportunity for them to really flourish in this team, especially now with Smurf on the main tank role. But I feel like I have to see another level. 
like I otherwise th this backline is not gonna cut it for competing with elite teams. Uh, that's how I feel like anyway. They certainly can um, contribute uh, and, and do a good job of it, but I'm not convinced that they'll be you know mm. big next thing in the APAC support backline. I have a little bit of a different take on that personally. I think with Toby coming, and this is really uh, linked to the coach. Obviously, we'll touch coaching in a second, but Toby coming in uh, as a head coach, I think we are going to see that a little bit sooner than you guys actually expect. Toby being like a veteran support player, a main support player at that, I think he's the perfect tool that uh, Soul Dynasty needed to help these new supports like come in, or sorry, Vindime come in. Obviously, Crate has been around for a little while. Um, I, I think they're going to do a lot better than people think, just on the fact that Toby is now the head coach. That's an interesting point. Uh, am I mixing Vindame up, or did Vindame play like 90% Brig? in the games that he was playing recently. Uh, the problem with me going and VOD reviewing a bunch of these contenders players is that they're all blending together in my fucking head. But I think Vindame was the one where I was watching and it was majority Brig, Brig gameplay. Well, sorry. Yeah. He does play Brig a ton. Right. Yes, he's, he's known, his most recent season with O2 was like yeah. almost exclusively Because it was Brig Zen. Like, yeah, that's, yeah right. they that's played the like an was. incredible amount of Brigida. Like he's Brigida has been the, 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 main, the main, main support for a long time. It's been Brigida. Like her kit has just been too strong. So yeah. like it's it's been mostly Brigida for him. And yeah. he's looked pretty good on it. Like I do, like the thing is when I think about their backline, I don't, I'm not saying that this backline is bad by the way either. Cause I actually think Creative is a pretty solid flex support player. Yeah. I think Creative is pretty good. I think Vindam on Brigida in particular look very solid. His other heroes I haven't seen as much of honestly. So I have not as much time to rate them. But like when you look at that, those two aspects, I do. And also legitimately Creative and Jonax Hero Pool pretty similar <laughs> with like like i in my opinion i thought the europe was pretty similar he played a lot of honor he's played a lot of bap i've rated his bap higher yeah than, i think the the bap is the main thing that i was meaning when i was talking really about the only the zin was the only thing that like really you would argue that creative is not as good at and even then he had a pretty decent zin when he's pulled it out so like i do feel like their 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 back line is actually like pretty good depending on what Vindime's like flexibility ends up being outside True. of Brigida. Yeah, does um, he have the Mosi? Does he have the Lucio? Are those I just even don't good necessarily picks? put it like the top. Would I put it in like a top three back line? Probably not, no. Yeah. I think you're also one of the doubters of the double flex support meta coming in, right? I, I was, am. I am a doubter of it. I, yes. I obviously, I wasn't able to watch your co-stream of the O2 shot game, but I heard there was much molding about double flex support. I I've I, I don't know. I, that's not to say that it won't work out, right? Because we don't know what the direction of Overwatch Two is going to be. I just think that based off, I can only work in 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 relativity, you know, like of like what we currently know about the laws of the universe. And double flex support does not seem good. Um, but like, who knows how that changes uh, moving forward? So. I mean, it's very interesting, right? From like a meta discussion, because you're getting into this point where DPS players. Like the ones we revere the highest, they they are the DPS players who can play like both Tracer. This is a bit of a bit of a random side topic, but whatever. Who can play like Tracer, Projectile, and some hit scan at the same time. Obviously, not like at an extreme specialized level, but to some degree, they can flex between all those heroes. So are we now getting to the point where at some point we'll have to start valuing supports? They can play like main supports and flex supports. Maybe. Because I mean, yeah. long gone are the days where like a main support only plays Lucio and Mercy. You know, like uh, we have we have some break, break specialists like skewed last year, but I think we're it seems like the league wants to go to the point where a support player can play both Lucio. Hey, it might revert and back Orsa. into it where main supports only play Lucio again. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> it's hard to tell when it comes to Overwatch 2 as well because even if you're, you know, even if you were talking to the teams right now and trying to get a feel for the meta and what it might be. They, they don't really know. They've only had access no. to the alpha for a short period of time, and the meadow is going to change over the course of the season, presumably as they patch things, as they... They, they started the dev live stream. They're, they're patching. So yeah. Like, it's it's going to change week by yeah. week, so I, the meta. It yeah. feels like just building a team, the important stuff to get is well-roundedness to prepare you for every eventuality, um, which I'm not convinced this backline has because it doesn't have the double flex support in case that becomes meta and i don't know what vindame looks like on stuff outside of the brig so i'm i feel like i'm cautiously optimistic with this backline but i'm not raving about it i'm not raving here and that on top of only having one tank means they better have a really good dps line and let me scroll my eyes up there oh 
they do. <laughs> they do have an insane DPS line. Wow. Fitz, Prophet, and Stalker. Uh, Johnny, I think it was you that was tweeting when Stalker got announced in October that like you'd been waiting for ages to see this guy play. Yeah, I think it's a really uh, exciting pickup. And I actually think he'll see uh, more playtime than people realize going into Overwatch 2. I mean, obviously, Fitz and Profit already, super established, elite uh, DPS lineup already. But uh, the flexibility as well that Stalker provides here and, you know, could... Uh, how he could operate alongside Profit. I think that could be a, a very exciting um, DPS pair to follow. It's honestly funny looking at that roster and just comparing it to a team like uh, the San Francisco Shock as well. But I mean, Shock, they have two flex supports. Um, but Seoul, they have one main support and one flex support. But it's essentially the same thing. One has Smurf and one has Super. And then you have three DPS players. So obviously, you know, Profit versus Proper. Uh, uh, and then you have uh, Fitz and uh, Stalker. Uh, oh my god, I'm just losing it. Fitz and Fitz Kilo, and Stalker, I guess you would compare them to. Much like, yeah, Kilo and Sam. So <laughs> it's 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 quite funny how early similar they are and how we can expect these two teams to round out. But it's an interesting point. Sort of, yeah. It's sort of how I watch the uh, the Soul Dynasty DPS line. I think it's pretty similar to Shock in that degree, where you have like one superstar DPS players. It, it's proper and it's profit. And then you have... Um, Stalker and sort of Sam to fill the similar slot where they, they're, they're flexible DPS players. But I think Stalker is very talented and I think he could offer a lot to this team when it comes to that flexibility that you mentioned. Who, who do you feel better about? Because I, I love, I think Proper's incredible for San Francisco, but to me, the other players around Profit are better on Soul than they are on Shock. Like if you ask me, do you want, do you want Kilo and Sam or do you want Fitz and Stalker I'd be going for Fitz and Stalker because I think they have more flexibility from Fitz than you do from Kilo if you're going to make like that kind of direct head-to-head -head with the DPS players, the hitscan, because Fitz doesn't just play hitscan. Fitz also has a bunch of other things that he can occasionally throw in there. Like he was playing Doom for a period and of time. And, well. You know, he's playing like Sombra for them and stuff. And then he's also picking up the 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 more traditional hitscan picks too and dominating on it. Uh, or maybe not dominating, that might be a little too far, but he's competing with the best players who are dominating. You know, he's up there with... He, he's up there with Lip, like, challenging Lip, but Lip was better over the course of the period of time that they were in the league together, I think. Wait, did you say that Fitz is on the level of Lip? I think what I mean is they're... I think you would have them, like, obviously Lip would be above, but I think Fitz was good enough to be challenging Lip and, like, pushing him, you know? If they're in a match, Lip isn't just shitting on Fitz. They're, it's a bit of a back and forth. It's I, just I don't, don't think that's even... I don't even think that's crazy if you were putting them in the same stratosphere. They're definitely been... Fitz's performances over the past two years have been really, really good. Yeah, like, I think so. Yeah, Lip has had some greats, has obviously stand out, but Lip is also on a way better team. So, like, I, I, it's really incredible, like, how good Fitz has looked for a player that I think that was relatively under the radar like i think the soul dynasty dps line is it, the by far the most exciting part of this team uh and like profit and fits are have been one of the best dps lines in apac for the past two years and adding stalker just gives them a little bit of extra flexibility like i don't even necessarily think that St stalker just gives them a little bit more chance to play different comps but i do i think that soul dynasty are well positioned just because their dps players their existing ones we're so good. And now they can just lean into the fact that we don't have to know what the fuck we're doing because we're Soul Dynasty. We're just going to let Profit and Fitz kill everybody. <laughs> like, I, and that's the Soul Dynasty way. And so, and, and also going back to Jack's point about Toby going to a head coach position, I'm still not sold on that. I'm not sold on the Toby head coach. And it's not because I don't respect Toby and I know he's a really smart player. And like, he's like one of the OGs. Like, that dude is like, when I remember when I was first playing, like, I was watching Toby montages and like how good Toby was and how balanced his place was. I still think he's one of the best main sports ever to touch the game. It's just, he's never coached before, and he, now he has to be a head coach, which is, like, a very tough role in particular. It's way different than assistant coach, where a lot of, like, players move into. Like, a head coach, you're in charge of a lot more than just strategies. You're in charge of, like, keeping the player morales up. You're also in charge of a lot of logistical things a lot of times as a head coach and, like, figuring out, like, okay, how is my team going to deal with, like, my organization and, like, kind of, like, that back and forth. Like, obviously, there's team managers for that, but, like, a head coach has a lot more responsibilities than just only in-game stuff there is like a lot of other other stuff going into it and a lot of sure. like soft skills and i don't know if toby has that but i do know that he has a lot of respect of the players so that is a very important first step always helpful. The players themselves respect him absolutely so, so we, can we've i talked... um, sorry can i just put up us on the spot real quick josh go on 
Would you rather have Seoul Dynasty's coaching staff or Hangzhou Sparks coaching staff? Yeah, I'd have Dynasties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd have Dynasties. Sure. What? Okay. So you, you, oh, okay. So you'd rather have Toby over Changun, Miro, and Neko. Yes. Yes, I would as well. Yes. I, I'm on board with and that. And that's just because that's because it's the devil. It's like the devil you know versus the devil you don't. And I'm like, I'm just taking a chance, you know? <laughs> I'm just taking a chance. Like, I don't know if Toby's going to be good, but I know the other staff maybe not going to be good. You get Wizard Young there as well. It's a nice addition. Oh, Wizard! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Perfect. we've we've had a little bit of a comparison, and I love that you brought it up, Johnny, between Seoul Dynasty and San Francisco. They do seem like fairly similar teams in terms of how they've been built. But their domestic rivals, I think the closest rival is going to be the Chengdu Hunters. So I want to throw that comparison in there as well. Because Chengdu, again, forgive me if I mistake this as well. I'm trying to keep all of the teams in my head. They have solo tank. They have a stacked DPS line. And then they have supports for days which is a, a big difference right that's the Half big the difference roster supports sure exactly that is a massive <laughs> difference but in terms of the solo main tank and cracked support uh, crack dps line that's where i want to start asking you for some comparisons smurf v gaga if you're looking at next season you can only have one tank on the team and maybe you can sign someone mid-season would you rather start with smurf or would you rather start with gaga Ignore the Chinese v. Korean comparison. Just ignore that. Just literally play a quality. Who would you rather have? I'm going to get roasted for this. People are going to hate me, but I'm going to go with Gaga. Really? Why? Um, I like his flexibility more, honestly. I just think it's proven, and I trust Gaga's mechanical skill, which we've seen on Wrecking Ball, for example, <laughs> yeah, to translate okay, over golf tanks. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, we're just fucking speculating, okay? Well, 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 you, you like you his flexibility what, on the Wrecking like the next... Ball... <laughs> You think you see so Smurf is gonna come in there and be the next super as well and just like fuck on Roadhog and sorry. I think Smurf is a better uh, is a better tank player, like going tank by tank on every tank apart from ball. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But <laughs> like, I do okay, think that Gaga has ball over Smurf. That's it. Sure. I mean, I'm speculating about the off tank heroes as well here. Yeah, to you that degree, I'm more confident in Gaga because of his already versatile hero pool. And the fact that sure. he's so good on those heroes i think that mechanical skill translates to example to doomfist uh maybe better than smurf does but maybe i'm wrong wrecking ball players are better at doom than mm. <laughs> they're both silly they're both silly they're heroes, both, they're both silly heroes. heroes. that is true yeah, yeah. one of one yeah. of smurf's best heroes is getting redesigned though in orissa right like he he was the orissa player yeah. for the team and it is getting fundamentally redesigned so Fuck knows what that ends up looking like. I think that's a really interesting comparison. I would take Smurf personally just because, I mean, I know that he's proven to be able to win at the absolute peak level. But I, yep. I I don't think it's a locked up decision. I don't think it's silly to go with Gaga by any means. What about the DPS line? So, Jack or Connor, w which DPS line would you rather have? Fitz, oh. Prophet, Stalker, or on the other side, leave Jinmu a Preta? I mean, I have to go for the Hunter's DPS line. I, I would have... So, just to balance it out, I would have said Smurf for the tank. I would have said Smurf for right, the tank. Right, okay. But I have to do the Hunter's DPS line. I mean, if there's, like, literally one thing to define the Hunters, it's leave Jinmu and now, I think, Aprita as well, who people... Who obviously, he's been around a long time, and a lot of people haven't seen him, but, like, he should impress in the Overwatch League if, yeah. if he carries over that performance. Obviously, he could always flop. He could always fucking flop, but, like... Based yeah. off his contender's performance, he should be fucking McNasty as well. <laughs> Jack, what do you think? Yeah, I don't want to be an agreeing Arnold, but yeah, I'm probably going to go with Hunters 2. Just the way my brain is thinking about Overwatch 2 with the lack of peel for back lines because less tanks leave Tracer too good at the game. Like, they, they are the re he is the reason Chengdu Hunters did so well. If they but did not have close, leave... Right? Be close. Is close, yes, yeah. but I would still, I would 100% put my money on trying to do Hunter's DPS. I, I feel like just because of that. I feel like the Soul Dynasty should be able to get more value out of Stalker than Chengdu getting value out of Jinmu. I think Jinmu's only got a couple of heroes you would want to be playing him on, and I don't even know whether those are going to be relevant. Whereas, Bar and Hanzo. <laughs> I feel like the trio covers a huge amount of room within the Soul Dynasty's uh triple. So, I feel I mean, pretty good about Jinmu that. Jinmu has a silly trait. You can't forget that. 
Like, yeah. it's not about the heroes they play, it's about the silly traits. Yeah, maybe. Just throw him in, and it changes the entire game. Also, I mean, I think there's more options to, like, if you were putting in Jinmu, you have a lot more options because of the lack of tank in Overwatch 2 to kind of, like, force your paradigm with Jinmu on there than you did in Overwatch sure, 1. Maybe, maybe. So I do feel like Jinmu, like, you you probably should have more options to work around Jinmu, I so think. So now I'm going to ask you the harder question, which is, and I'm not going to ask Jonathan, because Johnny's already said this, that Chengdu are going to finish above Seoul Dynasty. That was in our Chengdu episode. He said that. So I'm going to ask the other two now. Now that we've done a proper team preview of Seoul, Jack, do you think that this team is going to finish above Chengdu? Yes. Yes, I do. Even though backline may be a little bit weak, but I do think that Seoul will finish above Chengdu. I, when it got like announced that Doomfist was going to be a tank, honestly, my expectations for Seoul went down a little bit because I'm not like as much as I think Smurf can cover cover all of those bases. I am Chengdu still... have Jinmu who can play main tank. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, but I still think the DPS line for Seoul is exceptional with that broad fucking dps pool that they can play jimmu has the silly card for sure and i actually really like that point you said you can kind of force other teams to do dumb shit because jim jimmu does have that funny bone in him but um i would still take the soul dynasty over uh so would you have them at dynasty. second place do you yeah. think yeah behind the dragons yeah okay connor what about you oh um i have no belief in soul uh, Ooh, not that why? It's, it's, it's not well it's not as in I, that's actually too harsh I, i'm still thinking of soul <laughs> no <gesture>. belief <laughs> that's that's way too harsh i'm still thinking of like chengun soul with gesture and shit like no no no. i, I don't i i so i do think soul is going to be much better this year than they were last year and i think they're going to be more consistent too which is a big thing um for me but i think that overall the hunter's roster looks far more promising to me heading into overwatch 2 um i think they have a lot more pieces they have a lot better pieces to work with in terms of like how much how more flexible they can be like yes stalker is a very flexible dps player but if your back line is is evaporated every 10 seconds and you also have just like less options to run with your back line you have less options to support for stalker you have less options to like make your space and and then you talk about like how many different like great DPS players and the paradigms you can do with hunters. Like I don't know. I just think hunters overall looks a little bit more complete. But I mm. do think Dynasty has a very good potential to be better than hunters. They do have it. Like yeah, it's just I, I believe this is the season. If you're a Soul Dynasty believer, it, it's time to fucking like it, it's. I'm removing the narrative that Soul Dynasty is wacky and silly, and I, I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen with them. They're gonna be the best in the league or the worst. They're probably gonna be pretty good. I just don't know if they're going to be as good as the Hunters. Yeah, so. it feels like a new dawn for Seoul in terms of this could be their time to win the entire season, but that to me is predicated on them picking up talent mid-season. I don't think this current roster has the extra tank, the extra support line, that kind of thing, to really close this out and like win the APAC region. But if they make good pickups mid-season, I think they could. Um, all all right. right, that does it then for our Seoul Dynasty team preview. Whoa, that's uh, that that's a uh, that's a that's an interesting one. I wonder what the comments section is going to look like. There were a couple of hot takes in there, actually. I feel in terms of the in tank v YouTube tank or the, the comparison to shock no and the comparison to people Chengdu. are going to be upset that they they're not getting the vanilla takes. Like <laughs> whenever there's a hot take, they just riot against it. Okay, yeah. um, look, okay, <laughs> you know what I Always. hear it, but I think that Gaga is going to perform better this season than Smurf. Okay, that's just how no, it is. Okay, it's a hot take. if you want to hear that to get you going, okay, on it's your a hot don't take. walk, whatever. You can't well. argue with it. It's a hot take. It, it's not the accepted opinion of the masses. You guys love to hate it, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can catch us next time for another team preview or maybe one of our Overwatch 2 episodes if the devs have decided to talk about something this week. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.